Hello and welcome to our virtual hip and knee school. Um, we'd like you to watch this video um, to make sure that you're informed about what will happen before, during and after your operation. So before I go any further, I'd like to introduce everyone that's going to be talking. Um, I'm Susie, I'm the lead pain nurse and um, I'm going to tell you how best to prepare yourself before your operation um, and some practical information. Next, we'll have Dr. Joshi. He's one of our consultant anaesthetists. Um, and he's going to be speaking to you about your anaesthetic and what will happen in recovery and um, talk to you about all those kind of things that's involved with the um, process in the lead up on that morning. Um, next, we'll have Jill. She's one of our pain nurses. She'll talk to you about your pain relief and anti-sickness options. And then we will have Laura, who is the ward manager um, on the ward that you'll be coming to after your operation. She'll be talking to you about all the practical elements of what will happen when you're on the ward. And then last but not least, we've got Celia. Celia is part of our physiotherapy team and Celia will be talking to you about what to do in the run up to your operation, um, the physio when you come in and the rehabilitation afterwards. So a few, probably 20 years ago, if you had a hip or knee replacement, you'd be in hospital for about two weeks. Um, they wouldn't get you out of bed very quickly, but all that's changed. What we like now is for you to get up out of bed really early and to prepare yourself as best as possible that you can. So these days, a hip and knee operation is much uh, less of a problem. So if you're having your hip replaced, we would expect you to be in hospital for about one to two days. And if you're having your knee replaced, it's two to three days. Um, and what we run here at Rotherham is an enhanced recovery program. And what that means is we make sure that you're as well prepared as possible and as fit as possible to improve your recovery and get you home as soon as you're able. Now, you probably don't feel very fit, but you wouldn't be on a list for your surgery if you weren't. But there are a few things you can do to get you even more fit okay, before you come in. So the first thing we'd like you to do is we'd like you to eat a high protein diet. Um, that's oily fish, um, chicken, things like cheese, if you're vegetarian, tofu. And we've sent out an information um, guide to you. And on the second page is a list of high protein foods. Now, we'd like you to have that because that improves your recovery and um, wound healing. And it helps for you in your recovery so that you're less likely to need a blood transfusion. So, for any ideas, please refer to the sheet that we've sent you out. The second thing we'd like you to do is we'd like to make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids because if you're dehydrated, that can make joint pain worse. Um, so what we're suggesting is rather than drink a, a set amount, that when you go to the toilet for a wee, you check that your urine is almost colourless and that indicates that you're drinking enough. So. What we mean by fluids is you can have water, but you can also have dilute squash um, and tea and coffee. But if you like to drink a lot of tea and coffee, um, that contains caffeine, which can make you wee more. So it's probably a good idea to switch to decaf. So please make sure you drink plenty of fluids. All right, so try and drink roughly two to three litres a day uh, where you can, but ensure that your wee is colourless, okay, when you go to the loo. You'll also find on the information sheet that we've sent you on the front page are some exercises depending on whether you're having your hip or your knee replaced and Celia will talk about that later but she'll go into some more detail about those. What we'd like you also to do is as soon as you get the operation date through in the post we'd like you to ring your GP practice and make an appointment for two weeks after and that's to get your wound checked by the practice nurse. So if you've got so stitches that need to be removed, this is when they'll be removed. And we ask that you contact the practice nurse rather than district nurse, because a practice nurse can see five or six patients a day, whereas a district nurse might see two or three. So it just saves time. So if you have a problem contacting your practice or getting an appointment, please give the ward a ring. The number again is on the information sheet we've sent you. Um, and it might be that you need to come up to the ward and they'll look at your wound there or take your stitches out there, okay? Now, on the day of the operation, you can eat till 2 a.m. and drink till 6 a.m., okay? 
And between five and six in the morning, so that last hour where you're allowed to drink, we'd like you to have four, five or six cups of water. And that's just to make sure that you're really well hydrated so that after your operation, you've got less chance of feeling sick or needing a blood transfusion. And you can have dilute squash, you can have water, you can have black tea or coffee, but you can't have milk. So just avoid milk on that morning. Now, it's really important that morning when you're drinking your four, five or six cups of water that you have all your medication that you should be having unless you've been advised not to. So when you came for your pre-op appointment, they will have told you which drugs you could continue and which drugs you couldn't take. So please take all the medication you're meant to take, especially your pain relief, and bring all the boxes of drugs that you normally take in with you, just in case we don't have it in stock. And also on that morning, when you're drinking your four, five or six cups of water, please take two paracetamol, um, unless you're already taking something that contains paracetamol, like cocodamol or codiadromol. So two paracetamol, because when you come in, if you've not taken it, We'll give you two paracetamol um, in the theatre admissions unit, but we'll give you it with a tiny weeny bit of water in a pot like this, and it's quite difficult to get them down. So please remember to take two paracetamol. Again, all the main points that I'm covering will be on that information sheet. So a reminder about the paracetamols on there as well. Okay, right. So on the morning of your operation, what you'll do is you'll come to the theatre admissions unit, which is on B floor next to the lifts. Now, when you come, what you might find is that you have quite a wait because we run all day theatre lists and that's to use the best time. And if there's any cancellations, then we can um, move the list down and pop someone else on the end. So it speeds the lists up. But if you are waiting a while, it can be a little bit boring. So please bring with you something to keep you occupied. So a book, a paper, an iPad, something like that. Um, just so that the day is not too long. All right. And if you are later on in the list, they will give you a little bit more water in the morning. And also when you come, we'd like you to bring a small bag with you because you're not staying very long. One to two days for a hip replacement and two to three days for a knee, ideally. So you only need a small bag with some loose fitting clothes for the daytime and some pyjamas for nighttime. Now for ladies, skirts, shorts, uh, jogging bottoms, for men, loose fitting trousers, jogging bottoms, anything where it's easy for the staff to get to look at your hip or knee. And um, we only suggest pyjamas are used at night because what research has shown is if you stay in your pyjamas, your body starts to feel that you're poorly and you're not poorly. You're just in for a spare part fitted. So please just have your pyjamas for night time. And then if you get up in the day, you're motivated to do all your physio and get up recover well and get home. When you come in with this small bag, what will happen is that bag will follow you from the theatre back to the ward. Okay, so don't worry about not having your things. It will be transferred whilst you're in having your operation. Now, whilst you're in recover uh, the theatre admissions unit, you'll see quite a lot of people that morning. You'll see the surgeon. You might sign a consent if you've not already signed one. Um, you'll see quite a few nurses. And you'll also see the anaesthetist. And so this is where I'll hand you over to Dr. Joshi to talk about your anaesthetic. Hi, I'm Dr. Joshi. I'm one of the consultant anaesthetists here at Rotherham. Um, I may or may not be your anaesthetist on the day. There are 35 permanent members of anaesthetic staff here. So it might be myself or one of my colleagues. But fortunately, we all agree on what uh, the anaesthetic plan is for these operations. So you'll see your anaesthetist on the morning of the operation. Some of you may have already seen an anaesthetist in pre-op assessment if you have other issues, but you will still see an anaesthetist on the morning of the operation and they'll discuss the anaesthetic technique with you. So what we normally suggest for this operation for hips and knees is to have a spinal anaesthetic. A spinal anaesthetic is an injection in the bottom of your back that sort of numbs you from your belly button down. The reason we suggest the spinal anaesthetic is it works very well, gives you good pain relief during the operation, good anaesthetic during the operation, but it also gives you good pain relief for around eight to 12 hours after the operation's finished. There may be some people who can't have a spinal anaesthetic, but on the day of your operation, the anaesthetist will discuss the pros and cons and other options for you. So you'll be taken from the theatre admissions unit to the anaesthetic room. 
In the anaesthetic room, we'll get a drip into your hand, get you positioned for the spinal, and get the spinal in and working. Once that's in and we're happy it's working, if you do want, we can offer you some sedation to make you feel a bit drowsy through the operation. But what you won't be is fully asleep. But what we find once you're in and relaxed, the, the spinal anaesthetic and the sedation, you tend to fall asleep for the operation anyway. Um, some people like to listen to some music during the operation. You can bring an iPod or something to listen to music through. Or some people have read books during the operation, which you're all welcome to do. The operation takes about an hour and a half to two hours for the hips and knees. Once the operation is done, we'll transfer you onto your bed and take you around to theatre recovery. Theatre recovery is an important place to be because once you're in recovery, you have one nurse looking after you and you alone. So there, what we need to make sure is you're comfortable, you're not feeling sick. You can have a little drink of water in there as well. Um, but what we need to make sure is whilst you're in recovery, everything's sorted. So you're comfortable in your bed. Um, you're not feeling sick. You've got no pain. Any of those issues, please tell your recovery nurse and they can sort it out very quickly. Once you've finished in theatre recovery, we'll bring you down to the ward. Once you're on the ward, you've got one nurse looking after between 12 and 14 patients, which is why recovery is so important. So recovery to the ward, you'll be brought down by your recovery nurse and they'll hand you over to the ward staff. Hello, my name's Jill. Uh, I'm one of the pain relief nurses at Rotherham Hospital. I'd love to be able to tell you that after you've had your surgery, um, you won't feel any pain, but unfortunately pain is inevitable. Um, but I will tell you a couple of things that you can do to help control your pain so that you make a quicker recovery, which will lead to a quicker discharge. Firstly, as Susie has already mentioned, we'd like you all to take two paracetamols unless you are taking um, analgesia that has already got paracetamol in it, such as cocodamol, codidamol or tramacet. So if you could all take two paracetamol along with any other painkillers that you're already taking, including any patches uh, for pain that you use, we'd like you to keep those on and that's important. Today there is more and more people taking cannabis oil for pain, either that they've purchased from herbal stores or from the internet. If this applies to you, we would like you to stop taking this at least 48 hours uh, prior to your surgery, as this can interfere with the bleeding process. You're also required to bring in all of your medication, including your painkillers and in the box or the containers that they come in. This is um, so that we can get the correct dose prescribed for you as soon as possible. The wards don't stock all medication. So if you are on something that's slightly unusual, there may be a delay in you getting that drug. So after your surgery, you will be given a drug called oxycodone. Although this sounds similar to codeine, it doesn't have any codeine in it. You'll be given this tablet twice a day, 12 hours apart. But in between time, you can ask for a top up that comes in a liquid form that is quite quick acting. It's important that if you are in pain, you ask for this as soon as possible to enable you to do your physio and your exercises, which will lead to a quicker recovery and again, a quicker discharge home. When you first return from theatre, those of you that are having a spinal may not experience any pain for a few hours afterwards. However, this will start to wear off at some point. If you are offered any pain relief during this time, I would advise you to take it and not to refuse it, as you will start to feel pain at some point. Moving away from pain, I'd just like to briefly talk about sickness. Here at Rotherham, we use um, something called an acupin, which is based on the principle of acupuncture. Uh, by using acupins, we have reduced post-operative sickness from 48% to 10% in hip and knee surgery alone. So basically, an acupin is a small spot plaster with a tiny pin in the centre that's placed in the wrist area. And it should just look like this once it's placed. And then if you do feel sick, you just press it two or three times and that should take away your sickness. If it doesn't, then just press it another two or three times and the sickness should subside. You should be offered an acupin in the theatre admissions unit on the day of your surgery. But if you aren't, then please ask for one because I would highly recommend um, them for your sickness. So I'll now hand you over to Laura, the ward manager. Hi, my name's Laura. I'm the ward manager for the elective orthopaedic ward here at Rotherham. Um, this is the ward that you will come to after your operation. 
Um, when you come back to us, you might have a few things attached to you that you wouldn't normally have attached. So things like uh, drip. So we've already referred to drinking plenty before you come into the hospital, but we won't believe that you've drunk enough. So we will always give you an extra drip when you come into the hospital. This will be given to you in theatre and we'll follow you to the ward. When we get you back to the ward, we'd like you to get rid of this drip as soon as we possibly can. So we want you to drink plenty. There may be other things attached to your cell. These things may include a drain. We use two types of drain at the hospital here. So this is an everyday drain and it collects the blood that may um, accumulate in your wound. We leave this in for a day, we take it out the next morning and it just goes into the bin. We have a more nifty drain. This one collects your blood and filters it. If we collect a substantial amount, we can give it you back just like a drip. So let's, let's recycle and um, give it back to you. Now some patients may have a catheter. This may be because you've already had a discussion with your surgeon about um, having issues with your waterworks. So you might have already agreed to have a catheter put in. The other reasons for having a catheter may be because you can't pass urine. That's not an issue. We can always tackle those problems. So it may be that we pop you a catheter in because you have urinary retention. That means you can't pass any water. And we may put the catheter in just to release that urine and then we may remove the catheter straight away. Sometimes we leave it in and we will take it out maybe a day or so later. Now, some of you, or most of you rather, will have a spinal anaesthetic as your anaesthetic choice. The spinal anaesthetic sometimes makes our bladders go a little bit sleepy. And so you may find that there is an episode of incontinence. So if you find yourself feeling a little bit wet around your middle, don't worry, let us know and we'll change your sheets. So after your operation, we do want to get things running back to normal and our bodies do become a little bit sluggish after operations. So our systems don't always work as effectively as they normally would. These systems include waterworks, as we've already talked about, but also bowels. Now, there are a few things that are going to slow down your bowel function. One of them is painkillers. Now our pain team have already talked to you about using strong pain relief and we're not going to stop the pain relief. We need you to have the pain relief so that we can get you moving. So we will need to probably give you some laxatives. So please, please, please do tell us if you, have, if you are having problems with your bowels because having problems with bowels doesn't make you feel very well normally and that's when you're feeling well. So we do want to keep your bowel activity normal. Other things that might slow your bowels down are things like reduced appetite. So again, we want you to eat good um, high protein foods and keep your bowel stimulated. And also hydration. We've already talked about drinking plenty of fluid um, preoperatively and whilst in hospital. And we need you to maintain that so that your bowel activity doesn't slow down. The other thing that will help with your bowels is keeping mobile, which our physiotherapy team will work with um, to get you back on your feet. Now these operations aren't going to come without any pain and our team have already discussed having um, regular pain relief. What we do need you to do is tell us if you are in pain. Please, please, please don't sit and be in pain, especially at night time. Nights are very long when you're in pain. So ask our nursing staff. I've got an excellent team of nurses, but none of them have learned how to read minds yet. So please let us know if you do need extra um, analgesia. Also, with these operations comes other side effects like swelling and bruising. They are normal. You would get a substantial amount of swelling to your affected leg. Now, this can last for a number of weeks, sometimes a couple of months. Again, we expect it as staff that work here. However, I appreciate that you don't normally have that swelling. So please tell us if you're worried. We will answer any questions. Bruising does does um, come about, unfortunately. And again, that will last for a number of weeks and it will subside eventually, but um, with some elevation and mobilization, it will slowly um, recede. Now, at the moment, visiting is restricted at the hospital, but we do encourage your family members to ring you, to prompt you to carry on with your exercises, to encourage you to eat well, to encourage you to drink well. 
Um, we, we would also all, always recommend that they give you a call every day as well. It's good for our um, mental health as well. So please um, encourage your family members to, to do that. Now, another thing that I would like to talk about is getting dressed. You may have heard of a theory or um, a phenomenon or whatever you want to call it um, called pyjama paralysis, PJ paralysis. What that means is that we don't want you to be sat in your pyjamas or your nightwear in hospital. It is proven that we do feel like we are getting better if we do get dressed and resume normal activities. So we would like you to bring in everyday clothes into the hospital. We don't want you to come with a big suitcase and we don't have a fashion parade or anything like that, but we do want you to feel comfortable and we do need you to bring items of clothing that will accommodate swelling and bruising and ensure that our team can um, look at the wound that you've got and not cause too much worry um, or disturbance to you and your everyday activities on the ward. Now, you may have seen on our patient already that there is quite a big bulky dressing if you have your knee done. Now, the big bulky dressing will stay on for just overnight and we will remove it the next day. Underneath that dressing will be a nice incisional wound dressing, a long dressing that will cover your scar. Now, we wouldn't move this dressing or, or worry about it too much as, you know, removing dressings is actually an extra source of infection. So we, we do always try not to mess around with these dressings. However, if there is a, a lot of blood leakage on your dressing, then we might remove it and change it before you go home. We wouldn't expect you to change it again until two to three weeks after your operation. That's the point at which you would have been um, advised to make an appointment with your practice nurse to have a wound check and removal of any wound closures. Now, a lot of our surgeons do use dissolvable sutures, but some don't. So we will provide you with a clip remover if necessary. Um, and if your surgeon uses staples to close your wound. Now, unfortunately for you, the minute you arrive on the ward, we also think about your departure. So um, hip replacement patients tend to stay on the ward around two to three days. Knees sometimes stay a little bit longer because they have an extra few exercises that they need to achieve and, and, and manage to do before they go home. Now, what we need you to start thinking about from the moment you come in is how am I going to get home? So you need to think about, have I got a relative or someone that can come and collect me at that point of discharge? Someone stand on standby and then they can come and take you home. Hospital transport is an option. However, it may be a bit of a delay and it may take a few hours to get you actually home. So it's always better if you can get home with a relative um, and, and obviously make you comfortable at home. Whilst you're in the hospital, we will give you something to protect you from blood clots. These operations are quite high risk operations. Um, so we need to ensure you're kept as safe as possible. So whilst you're on the ward on, on the first few days, you'll have an injection into your stomach. It will be a daily injection. And then upon discharge, we will convert you to an oral medication. Some patients will take aspirin and some patients will take an alternative. It depends on the, on the surgery that you've had. But the nursing staff and the pharmacists will um, advise you on that. Now, other important information I need to let you know are things like if you have grazes or cuts or wounds on your leg that is being operated on, you really need to let us know. These are things that could potentially stop your operation from happening because it could be a source of infection. And as I've already mentioned, these operations are very high risk operations. If you have a manual reclining chair at home, we would encourage you not to use it if you are having a hip replacement. This is because the function that um, enab is enabled to lift out your legs sometimes is quite a rapid movement and can cause a lot of pressure in the hip joint and can cause dislocations. Another thing to let you know is that the ward runs a nurse and therapy led discharge process. This means that your consultant may not see you again until you come back to your follow-up appointment in six to eight weeks. So that doesn't mean that a doctor won't see you, 
it may just not be your consultant. So this also enables you to be discharged at a weekend. Other things just to let you know are the minute that you leave the ward, you aren't on your own. We still are contactable. You can always ring the ward if you have any problems. And also if you refer to the leaflet that you receive through the post, you'll have the number for the arthroplasty nurses. So they are a fantastic resource and will answer lots of your questions if needed. Now, just another common question that we are frequently asked is around driving. Driving would not be permitted until at least six weeks postoperatively, um, but we would always encourage you to be guided by the physiotherapy team. The, the be all and end all is that you need to be able to perform an emergency stop procedure. And if you can't move your legs quick enough, then you will put other road users at risk. Hello, my name's Celia. I am one of the therapy uh, support workers who work in orthopaedics. Um, and I'm going to go through with you some things that you need to do prior to coming in for your either a total hip or a total knee replacement. So first of all, we start with things that you need to do prior to coming in. First of all, I'd like you to remove all mats and carpets, loose carpeting, and have pathways that you're going to use uh, in your house uh, clutter-free and obstacle-free. This is because you'll be going home either with elbow crutches or uh, a minority of you will probably be going home with a Zimmer frame, but we hopefully to, to get you onto to mobilise with a pair of elbow crutches. Now, also, before you come into hospital, we'd like you to think about having a handrail fitted on your stairs. Uh, we, we advise this because to do a stair assessment, which we'll need to do prior to discharge, uh, is a lot easier with elbow crutches if you've got a handrail. If you haven't got a handrail, you can contact the council and they will put you on a, a first handrail on your stairs free of charge, even if you own your property. If it's council property or own your property, but private rented, I don't think they will do this. Also, before you come in, you need to think about your everyday items. So how are you going to get uh, your, your cups and your saucers and your plates? If they're on a high shelf and you've just had surgery, you need to be putting them on the lower shelf. Same as uh, your items in your fridge and your freezer and your lower, your lower cupboards. Get someone to put them on the higher shelves prior to you coming in so then it makes uh, life easier for you when you go home. Have your tea and your coffee and all your everyday items and your kettle in one place so you're not having to move items from A to B after surgery. If you have had a hip replacement, uh, then especially this is um, a good idea because what you don't want you to do is having to bend into lower cupboards. Uh, if you've got them and you can use your work surface, then you can just take the affected leg back and then go into your cupboards. Same as when you're reaching high into your cupboards, have everything on the lower shelf. This is to make mobilising a lot easier for you post-operatively. Also, what I want you to think about is how are you going to sit down? If you've been struggling prior to coming into your operation, how are you going to sit down after your operation? If you've been struggling, I'd advise you to get some cushions or pillows to hire your chair so when you sit down, uh, it's not at a lower level. Also, if you've been struggling to transfer onto your bed, think about getting two pillows, putting at the edge of the bed and then taking your bad leg forward and using your hands, bending both knees to reach down so you're not going to a lower level. Now, the day of the operation. So if you come in for your operation uh, on the Monday morning, we will try and get you up the Monday afternoon. That depends on if you go down to theatre early, early on in the day. If you don't, then we will more than likely get you up the next day. And this is called enhanced recovery. If you are a patient who has gone down to theatre early on that day, we will check with the nursing staff that you're medically fit to get up. 
tool therapy uh, workers will come and they will assess you on the bed. We'll check that you've got your range of movement significantly. We'll check you've got sensation in your lower limbs. And we'll also check that you're feeling fine in yourself. First thing we will do is we'll assist you to get to the edge of the bed. And once you've done that, at that stage, you can become a little lightheaded and dizzy. If you are lightheaded and dizzy, please tell us, because if you are, we will at that stage put you back into bed. But if you're feeling fine, we will then proceed to stand you up to a, what we call a rollator frame. Uh, there'll be two members of staff there and we'll just do some weight transfers right to left and some marching on the spot. If you feel fine, we will step you around to a chair. And that will that is all we will do the first day. After that, we will come and see you twice a day, every day until you discharge. On the second occasion we come to see you, it is more than likely we progress your mobility with the frame. But at this stage, if we feel you are able to go on to elbow crutches, we will progress you to a pair of elbow crutches. When we feel confident that you are safe and independent on those elbow crutches, we'll go on to assess you, getting off a chair, getting off the bed, getting off the toilet, and also a stairs assessment, and a step assessment to get into your property. Once you have passed these assessments, we will then go on to refer you to our follow-up physio team, either at Park Rehab Centre or at the Rotherham District General and there you will have follow-up physio. Before you're discharged, we go through uh, some exercises with you and some range of movement. Now, knees need to be able to get the legs straight, and we've got a patient here who I can show you how to do that. So this patient here is laying on the plinth, and what we need to do, the knee has to go very, very straight. It has to be what we call neutral. So that means the leg is straight. So we give you some exercises to make sure this is uh, doable, but we show you, and then it's up to you to follow the instructions and the exercises we give you. Linda, if you can sit over the bed. We also need you to be able to get your knee about 80 degrees. Some consultants like them at 90, Mr. Garnetti, but other consultants will let you go home at 80 degrees. You need to be able to lift your leg off the floor like that. That is what we call a straight leg raise. And we like the leg to be in full extension. That means fully flat. You can use a donut at home, and I'll show you what a donut is. So. Can I get donut? And this you use to bend the knee back and forth. We don't want it so much going forward, but into flexion, into where your knee is bending. And these exercises are for knee patients only. If you're having hip surgery, you need to be able to be do some exercises prior to you going home. There will be a set of exercises um, given to you before discharge and some discharge leaflets. And then we expect you to do those exercises uh, prior to going to your follow-up physio, which is usually in a week, a week's time post-operative. That is for hips and knees. Uh, due to the COVID, it might be virtual for hip replacements at present, but all knee surgery patients are face to face and the hip surgery patients, after the first one is a virtual assessment, you will then have a follow up face to face physio with uh, the therapist who will deal with hip surgery. This is uh, what we call an easy reach. And for those patients who are having hip surgery, it is beneficial to get one of these because what you don't want to be doing you don't want to be having to bend down and pick things up off the floor. So if you've got one of these, you can pick these up and also it helps to put your underwear on. We will show you how to do that 
when you're on the ward. So please ask, don't forget to ask about that. And any other questions that you need to ask about, uh, you can. You can buy these at local stores in Rotherham uh, and they are about three, three pound. Uh, and we'll tell you which stores to buy them from uh, once you're an inpatient. Uh, if you've got any questions before you leave, please ask the therapist who was treating you and we will try to answer all questions as given. Thank you for your time.